you can market what you find interesting because they're the things that people actually care about. You know, there's there's certain things that you can get your personality and your skill set out without actually just producing that one building. Business of Architecture UK, episode three. Hello and welcome, Architect Nation. This is the podcast for architects where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running an impactful and profitable design practice. Today's podcast is sponsored by BQE Core, the award-winning platform that combines time and expense tracking, billing, project management, accounting, and business intelligence. Make work easy with Core. You can get a free trial at businessofarchitecture.co.uk forward slash demo. In today's episode, I sit down and chat with John Miller and Dean Bove of Architects Republic. Now, this is quite an amazing story of how John, who is an architect himself and is currently working in practice, and Dean, who is from a marketing background, have come together and created a new online platform which serves to connect architects with clients and it's already proved to be very popular and it's got some incredible testimonials and a lot of support and I sit down in their offices and speak with them about the story behind Architects Republic and we really go into a lot of really good conversation around marketing information for architects, uh, the kind of pitfalls that architects uh, often find themselves in and how their platform offers an alternative and a new way of connecting architects with the right client. So I hope you enjoy and uh, enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture in the UK. I'm Ryan Willard and I'm here with John Miller and Dean Bove of Architects Republic. Welcome. Hiya, how are you doing? I'm very good. Absolute pleasure to be speaking with you guys this evening. So John and Dean have set up, and there's a third one, isn't there? Yeah, Arthur, he's a developer. So you've got a develop, the developer uh, as well? Uh, coding side of things. Coding side of things. Yeah. And your background originally is, you're an architect. Yeah, architect. And Dean, your background is? Uh, marketing and communications. Marketing and communications. Yeah. And you've set up a platform called Architects Republic, which is basically a kind of a new way of for clients to find, to go through and navigate that very difficult process of finding an architect And actually, you've kind of built it into a website, which is really empowering architects to be able to have their services seen in the best light. And also, from the client's perspective, really sort of demystifying the process of finding the right architect for their job. Yeah, Yeah, I was actually going to start by saying it's actually to give clients the understanding of what an architect actually does. Okay. Well, that was... (laughs) I think that's the... That was going to be smaller end of the scale. They just don't know what we do. Yeah. How how would you describe the platform? Um, And how was it it born? Well, it was born... um, First year of my master's for the actual idea. Yep. Um, I I wanted to showcase my work as most architects would want but having a website about myself was uh <laughs> wouldn't have been very good yeah i thought about me and my fellow students and then i looked into that as a, like a, a model and then started playing around and then it was like okay actually there's not one for architects there's not one for anyone in the professional environment there's not one to showcase anything ever mm. uh the riba hadn't redone their site at the time there was nothing around and uh i set about coming up with a business model which didn't really work to start with it was more like a showcasing portfolio site right but it had a map on it so we kind of launched and you could search which is you know i say have a map on it but clients were at that point and i still think even now are using google maps to find their architects in most locations so (laughs) if you use it (laughs) it's it's unbelievable right but um they're still doing that so we're we're at a point where okay i mean it just sort of illustrates the gulf (laughs) between you know the the, the clients and how architects are actually in that conversation yeah sort of selling their wares yeah it's it's a difficult one to understand but i kind of had to pull back and then get around the fact that people are just using a map and then how can we benefit them from not just using a map and seeing their work and then what's the next thing they need they need to understand what our services are what we provide how we go about pricing things what we do for that cost Mm. and 
not and not doing the traditional thing of putting everyone in competition with one another, which is yeah. the reason why small practices, um, I say small practices, 98% of the industry is made of practices of less than 10 staff. So I'm talking for most of the, most of the industry here, wow. can't bid on big jobs. So it comes across, they can't, you know, can't get their work and services out there and they haven't got the resources and budgeting behind them to be able to do this. So yeah. it was how do we do it in a fair way? How do we create something that is really engaging for both sides where they can pick and choose who they want to work with uh, and employ on one side and vet them on based on their design skills rather than just looking at a portfolio site. Um, and that's where we're at. We're just kind of going for beta testing now. Uh, it's exciting, really exciting times, but I'm doing this externally to work as I have been. Right, so you're still in full-time employment. Yes, yeah, still in full-time employment. Uh, yes, no, no, no. I, I love the practice I'm working for. It's a, actually one of the best practices I've worked for, so yeah. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm getting great experience. Uh, I, I should give them a heads up. Uh, it's Pollard Thomas Edwards. They're a really good practice. Uh, lovely bunch of people, really nice clients as well. Learning a lot, so carry on working there till I've uh, set this up, and then you know they know about it. They've actually got a profile on the site, so amazing, <laughs> which is great. Well, that's great to have like a kind of collaborative yeah. employer who's supportive of. Yeah, yeah. I think they they got it on there before I. They knew that I was the person behind it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't say it's collaborative. Like, oh. and they most probably don't know that I'm having this interview. <laughs> they definitely don't. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, um, they might hear of it. So I'll have to give them the heads up, but you know. Brilliant. And so, so from your experience, then, what have you seen, like, the kind of common mistakes that architects make in being able to, you know, communicate clearly what it is that they provide to their clients, what the sort of mistakes you see architects employing in terms yeah. of their marketing online? Well, on, I, I can say a few words on this, and... As an architect, I shouldn't. I should pass it over to a professional who is a marketing and comms professional rather than writing and saying my own stuff because only other architects were like that and not actual clients. Yeah. So I'll pass it over to Dean. Yeah. Um, well, one of the obvious tricks of the trade is really um, understanding what sort of audience you're trying to communicate to. Right. And that's one of the biggest things architects have a real issue with, and that's um, just marketing themselves to other architects. Um it, I think it's something that we've been talking about for a very long time mm. as marketing comps professionals. But I think now times are changing where that isn't the case. So what does, what, is, what does that look like if you were to sort of, what does a sort of an architect communicating to themselves look like in the, in, oh, on the internet it, or the it, website? It's just images and um, text that don't really correspond to <laughs> how, every people, how every day people live these lives, live these buildings and see them. <laughs> You know, you, you, you don't look at a top edge of a building against a blue sky every day. You don't see it in the context of the real world on your websites and yeah. things like that. Um, so it's, it's kind of objectifying those buildings, mm. and singling them out. Um, you know, there, there are some good examples out there of the way in which people, architects and practices, communicate these things. But, you know, we all know the issues they have. Comms team. <laughs> they have a comms team. Yeah, they have a comms team, but they're always, uh, even them guys, I have to answer to the architects sitting at the top and running those businesses who have final sign-off and say. Mm. You know, the successful ones listen to their comms department, yep. the unsuccessful ones do not. So, yeah. Fair. And, and, and what are the sort of problems that you see architects using, not just in their sort of the visual material that they're using, but also the kind of written content that they put onto yeah, their websites? Well, it, I think architects don't tend to look at it as an educational tool. Um, a lot of the client base, not a lot of the client base, but you know, a large majority of the client base are homeowners, individuals, mm. businesses that have never done the process before. Um, so they need to be taught and spoken to about the process in a way that they would understand um, from beginning to end, not just understanding what they did, you know, how they understood their brief and how they delivered it, but the journey in which they went on. Right. Um, and I think that's something that really needs to come out and it is coming out i think there's a lot of smaller practices that are quite open and honest about the processes they've gone through the ones that have failed the ones that yeah have been successful but really how they've done it mm. and all the challenges that they encountered along the way um kind of like a telling a story like yeah it is exactly like that um but in a educational way yeah yeah 
I would like just like to jump in there. There's, there's, I think, from a small practice point of view, there must be uh, the way that they market themselves can't be. They want to look different to the next person. They want to try and do something differently to everyone else. But that that drives down their actual value so much because there's not that many of them, even though there's there's. I don't know, like three and a half thousand practices across the UK. Yeah. And lots of them are small and lots of them work in rural areas. There still isn't that many architects. So trying to make yourself that different, your designs will be different anyway. So the clearer that your business model is, the clearer that your focus is on your key strategy of what you're trying to achieve, Mm. even if it is small extensions, even if it is like these tiny little projects of 40K, 30K upwards, as long as you get that correct, you will pull in these jobs. It's that they're trying to make themselves so different in the way that they're doing it. It creates a lack of, uh, you know, like Dean was saying, they client, yeah, they don't know how to do these jobs. They don't know how to engage with these architects, what their services are, yeah, and the lack of, you know, they're not teaching them anything, yeah, and the people don't know how to do it. So they just need to get in there and fight for that and get their message out. Like even if it is quite similar to the next person but there, there will be different ways that people look at a different site it will be your take on that yeah you know? well it's, it's quite an interest it's, it's really fascinating actually because this is if this goes way deeper than just sort of getting or winning the project in the first place because if you don't know how to be communicating all through the process to your to your client mm. and what you're going to have problems negotiating your fees going through you know your client will be sort of in this they won't know what it is that you're actually doing and i and i hear a lot particularly from like insurance um, you know brokers or people when when things go wrong in construction projects it's often this communication between the architect and the client that's kind of fallen apart and Kind of suffered, and it does. It sort of it starts off with this, with the with the front face of the of the machine. These are what my services were, yeah. And you said this, and it's like, well, you didn't do that, or you did do this, or you didn't do that. Yeah, like you say, it's the communication between those, and it's finite. Yeah, you know, people go into these contracts, not well. People go. <laughs> I say contracts because I'm always used to that, but mm. people go into these uh, deals without having contracts. A minor works contract in place yeah and it's ludicrous you're going to spend that much money without actually doing that but clients don't know that that's the first thing they should look through is the scope of services is the scope of fees is the is the time scales related to this mm. like the the tendering process of going to any builder they need to know these things to be able to give it you know give it their all and produce something which is good yeah at the end of it you know? yeah i think a- even at the beginning of the process and i think this is where our website stands out is that um, it's not just a case of demonstrating what you've done and what you've done before, but it's from the outset and for the very beginning of that journey and the relationship that the client and the architect go on is that you're asking the, the, the architect to interpret what they've done and what the words they've put down and how they've, you know, how they've written their brief basically and showing them, showcasing exactly how you've interpreted that information and what you can do for them. Yeah. And that is the very start of the process, the very start of the relationship. And I think if you start from that and not just start from, oh, you're down the road, so I'm going to visit you and hopefully you'll be the right one because you've demonstrated what you've done before and that'll be that. You did the, you did, you got, you got planning over there on that, on that street. I've got to jump in. I, 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 I speak to a few architects, obviously. And, uh, I heard a great story. This is my client. He interviewed. He was doing a one-off house, and it was it was a large sum. It was a bespoke thing. Won loads yeah. of awards, and the the architect who won it, the uh, they the client set up a meeting to be able to like, meet. I think it was like three or four architects over a couple of weeks, and he said, "Oh, he isn't even here." He hasn't even turned up. And he looked in his garden. He'd already pitched up. He's been there an hour sketching out what he was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, he's turned up. He had a compass, had the whole thing, got the job. And that's because he had the insight to think that this is what the client wants to see. He wants to see me taking this role. To he gets every single job like that. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. You, you don't I love it. that. That's still <laughs> you don't want to hear another architect talking the talk and then, you know, walking out the room just assuming they've got the job. <laughs> but, you know, that's a very good tactic. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there, there's there's lots of them out there. Mm. You know, it's just having the you know, oh, there's this, it's that, it's that. But they want to see the sketches. They want to see what your interpretation would be, or what their bit of land is, their site, whatever they have. They want to see what you'd bring, and that is what you bring, and then you take it further, and that's what our site would do. Yeah, well, 
yeah, and we're using you know technology to facilitate that process to make the whole of the UK local. Mm. Uh, you know, breaking down those preconceptions that local is best. Maybe from a planning perspective, that's right. But you know, when you no, so that's that that's really interesting as well. Is like the you know having uh, yeah having architects being able to work in other areas rather than just their sort of yeah lo so, locale so, and and actually yeah like you say breaking down that yeah. sort of so the, the first site as it was just a map it was just an advanced Google map and you could go through and look at their work you know but then because that was based on their practice location yeah so the next one when they're so this going was, this was the first version of your the site first version but this version that we're now doing so the first version which has been and gone that's how it was it was just their practice location so you could pull them out see where they were this next thing is put where they've worked so if you've worked in if you're based in rural wales not dropping any names but you've done other jobs elsewhere you'll you will get picked up everywhere because of the external jobs that you're doing. So everywhere that you've got an intel, you're doing something over there, you'll get picked up and you can build up a base. You don't have to be in that one location. You don't have to have that office or that postcode or remote postcode in London because you want to be seen like you're in London. You've done a project in London. You've already got your base in London and you're advertised off it. Yeah. You know, that's the way it should be. Yes. You know. It's yeah. No, I mean, I mean, you can get to that. But. That that's really interesting. I, mean, I, I know my own personal spirits running a practice. You've got, you know, living in London and you've always had this fantasy of doing projects out in the wilderness in beautiful locations up in Northumberland or somewhere really gorgeous and you're like well that is like how do I get another one of those how, yeah how do, how, do I, how do I communicate with that how yeah. do I sort of keep that link for the length of time it's up there because yeah. they, they, the buildings grow and they get better mm. you know especially the house of the year I think that's I don't know what clients think of it but from an architect's point of view the, he, the client obviously loved it I, I think it's a fabulous building absolutely fabulous and that should keep its credit and keep bringing him work both of them work for the next you know for the next 30 years and the, other than that one time award where they'll be found it kind of drops off where does your marketing come from after yeah. that how can you keep that link there and it's by having that project located somewhere where a site can bring them work because of it yeah you know that's the start. One of the starting points that we come from. Amazing. Uh, and uh, so, what's the sort of service that you provide for architects, and how do clients engage with the platform? Um, so, the service that. And we how do you reach clients? How do how does that? So, obviously, you're, you're kind of sort of you've got two sort of it's, audiences. Yeah. So, so, um, so it started obviously uh, two sides of a coin. One side being architects. One side being clients. Uh, I got a lot of architects on board, so we're now pushing towards a lot of clients. So getting that other side of the marketplace up and running is making sure that the architects are happy with their side of the site. Then we've obviously, we're doing the sponsorship for NLA 2018, yep. part of their program. Program sponsors, isn't it? Don't, yeah, don't move. Yeah, don't move improve program sponsors. And from that, we're doing, we're doing the events for the public consultations. Right. And the last one, we got a 100% hit rate of every client we spoke to really wanted to put a brief on our site. We weren't at the right stage for that. Um, the next one, the big one's in February. That's when we're planning on launching. So the client can actually submit a brief? Submit a brief. We, we, so they tell us their details. Yep. We'll vet that brief yep. based on what we anticipate the architect needing, yep. which is, you know, for me, I'll be able to do it pretty quickly. As long as the client can respond and get the information. So it's almost like you're like a translation exactly, service. Exactly, exactly. Making sure the information is there. And then once the, enough information is there, we post it out to the community. And the architects have said within their profile that they want to do these kind of jobs, these kind of jobs, these kind of jobs in these locations with this kind of budget range. You yeah. Know, not being over the top because obviously if they've never done anything like that, it won't get picked up. But you can go outside your, you can go outside your thing because you'll still get put into the list of the client. So if you have never done a school before, but you've done a few things and you want to get into that area, you will still put you in that list. The client can still look at your work. They'll still look at what you're doing. And then we give that list. So we vet the client's brief. We post that out of the community. They say whether they're interested or not. Mm -hmm. We then pass that list, because it has to be a bit of a two-way here. We pass that list back to the client. The client then sorts and filters through that list and then pulls out their favorites, invites, starts speaking to them, uh, starts inviting them to submit design, and so ideas. and so you're still quite involved in this in this yeah, client interface. Yeah, it's not yeah, it's not yeah. like it's a kind of website. People just it's kind of just automated. You no, guys, you guys we're, are we're actually, very involved. Like a service. We're very involved. Yeah, because because it's still going through testing, still going for a lot of development. Yeah, I think without without us being there every step of the way, I just don't think it will work correctly. And I think architects yeah. will get frustrated. 
I think clients will get frustrated and there's a, we need to be able to teach them that path. Mm. And at the moment, we've got suggestion tools where you hover over and it tells you what you should write in this box or what you should do. But that's not enough. We need to keep pushing forwards. I think the main thing is just use to, using the technology not to replace the process, but just to facilitate it. Yes. And just to speed up the interactions to make that, that interaction accessible to a wider audience yeah you know rather than having to go to a physical location to sit down and have those those meetings to talk about those design ideas and there's no reason why this all can't be done online yeah really yeah um, no and that, that that's just to break down those barriers of it's the softening of is the softening of the first meeting yes it's taking away the confusion from a client point of view and from an architect's point of view you're not you've won an award you get 400 phone calls in the first month you think oh my god i have made it i am going to hit the big time and then it dries up <laughs> it's not or, they're, or, they're, or they're like totally not the right kind yeah, of phone calls that you want in the first place everything every single bit and piece and this and that and this it's filtering that down to be able to show you a list of potential clients yeah you say whether you're interested in doing it and taking it forwards in an in a natural way rather than like getting these these hits of like amazingness because you've won an award or you've built something and it's going really well. The client's super happy. Plus, you know, referrals are still a bloody good way of doing it. But for people who aren't getting all the referrals all the time, there's there's other ways of getting work. And I think this is gonna this should be something within every architect's like range of how they get working. Yeah. Well, the main thing is reducing the amount of waste of time that they have yeah. as well. You know, we hear all the time of all the small architects that, you know, 95% of the people they sit down and meet and spend an hour talking to doesn't end up with work. And I think this is a way of... Sort of pre-qualifying people and kind of exactly. having... We're, we're even going to test... Various things are going to test along the way, but vetting briefs so they don't upload anything. We'll take a retainer. Yeah, there's there's various ways that we can off put anyone who's like, well, I'm just going to see what I can get out of this, and I know a good builder who can do a bit of this or whatever. Yeah, you know, we make we'll make sure that this is the projects that are coming through of a certain night. You know, they are going to the right people. Yes, it works both ways. It has to, otherwise. Yeah, uh, the I mean, it's 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 it's, it's amazing because I've I mean I've had experience with oh I can't remember what was it called. It was like service. You know, it was a, it was a very poor website mm. where clients were putting up like little kinds of almost like a Reddit type forum. Okay, and then you know I would pay twenty quid for a lead, and yeah. you'd have a phone conversation, and he'd wander all the way down to some sort of dingy part of yeah. Boreham yeah. Wood or something. And you're like, why am I here? And yeah, then yeah, have a conversation for a couple of hours. That it was just totally not the right fit yeah. at all when it no was, I think it's important for us for this whole process obviously with there's a, a bit of market testing to do and things like that especially in the client side of things um, but we want Architects for Public to be fair to both sides of that marketplace yeah. you know we want to be the guys that help these small practices grow by reducing their costs and reducing their waste of time and resources mm. and stuff but also not waste their time in having to scour through a website that's full of dead ends, basically. Um, so how, how that's going to be a striking balance. So how I do think. you guys monetize the platform? So uh, unlike the lead-based site that you said, there's yeah. like my builder. There's a few out there which do various kind of jobs, and they all are very small, um, very small uh, fees. So they're like twenty quid to get a job with five hundred pounds or something like this. Yeah. This is, uh, for most people, up to a certain extent, the, the biggest amount of money they'll ever spend. Yes. And at that point, you, we have to build them trust. We have to build up that relationship, that trust with them yep. uh, on something that they've never done before. Most of the time, they've never done before, and they don't know how it's working. Yep. So we'll build that trust up, and then once we're at that level, they'll have an option. So at the point of posting the brief out, getting the list back to the client of the architects who are interested in their area. They have a list of filters they can filter by, they can keep them, save them, filter down to a smaller list, and then select their favorite shortlist. So depending on the budget size, it's you up against three. Yep. So it'll be you and two others. So you're not competing against 
hundreds of people. You could be to get against two others. Yeah. Uh, you, you submit a sketch design. It won't be anything more like an A2 or A3 even. Yeah. Two A3s with like a, a fee proposal, what you're doing, this, that, the other. And then you, during this process, you can, you can meet them, you can have site visits, you can speak to them, everything. Because it's, it's just it's a tendering-based site. Yeah, it's for a design tender site. Yeah, and oh, that's um, very, that's very comforting to know that it's not like you know no, like, like hundreds of other architects all pitching in for some in you know inappropriate yeah. job. This, like, this is the this is the problem even with like um, what was it the what was that large competition last year the Helsinki Guggenheim, Helsinki Guggenheim, Guggenheim, Guggenheim yeah. yeah so that was um, how many eighteen hundred practices ended that they spent what, four and a half minutes on each. Each entry, uh, what is that? <laughs> like the amount of money which was wasted by practices entering that. Okay, it's a golden ticket to go like absolute stardom. Well, if the but project gets, if yeah, the project goes if, ahead if, anyway. Yeah, yeah so. if the project goes ahead, but it's it's completely unfair. And it's the wrong business model for anything other than like yeah. a, an international design competition. And there's there's nothing else out there which is even trying it, trying to make it a lot fairer for people. Mm. I just you know it has to happen. So hopefully people will be on board. So yeah, so how? So, 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 I don't even got. We're doing it all for free. <laughs> don't hold me to that. Don't hold me to that. No, but, um, so it basically, once you've been shortlisted, uh, so you pay membership as an architect. Okay. Uh, we will do it for free to start because we're beta testing. We're trying yep. it out. Do all the rest of that. Um, so once you've been shortlisted, the client will then vet your designs and everything like that. Once you've been shortlisted, whoever you all go into a contract. So whoever wins gets charged a fee. So if you, depending on the project size. Right, and then you, you just take a, a fee out of a, a commission fee kind of thing. fee, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And it, they're not, they're not stupid. They're yeah. Not stupid. We've had it, we've gone to three or four practices with these fees and they're all happy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll move forwards with that. But the, even when we launch uh, in February, late February, properly, um, it will be free to start with just because we need to try and there'll be testing there'll be phone calls there'll be lots of emails flying around you know it won't be yeah. like a set thing like oh we've got one job we're going to do this it'll, you know we need to try and make it right for everyone yeah so that's where we're at that's the, that's the business model at this point fantastic yeah at um, last yeah uh, it, 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 and so how long how, how, <laughs> you, yeah so how long have you all been together as a, as a team so and what, what's, what, what's been your own sort of entrepreneurial journey like you know building your own team fitting it around day jobs yeah yeah it's been a because that's a, it's that's been a, a story in itself it's been yeah it's been a really tough one i mean uh, john's had the uh, john's had the enthusiasm from the get-go he's always been enthusiastic and he's very much the driving force of the team um <laughs> <laughs> when he realized he couldn't do everything he brought me on board like an architect <laughs> like an architect it took him long enough to realize that he couldn't do all the business and marketing side of things on his own well, I mean, um, th- I mean, that's like a massive breakthrough that, uh, uh, like you were saying, a huge, a huge, a huge amount of architects <laughs> may never make have that, you know, breakthrough in their thinking that actually, no. you know what, maybe I should talk to someone who's a specialist in marketing. No, and if I say so, it's probably the best thing you ever did. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Arthur, and Arthur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I came on board and then that's when we really started to um, set out the journey for the product and stuff. Um, we went to a few agencies to see, you know, what it would cost to get it built, and we decided not to remortgage our houses. <laughs> ninety thousand, ninety thousand was the the cheapest thing that come in to build, and it would have been like the bare bones of something. Wow! So we, so we at that point had to make a decision to get a developer on board and as part of the founding team. Yeah. So that's what we've done. Yeah. So we um we we went out to the tech world, which was a steep learning curve for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, different world it was like it was a, a speed dating for I think it was what was it called hacks something and something at the Google building oh, yeah. like a hack space like, type of thing yeah well that. it was just basically you had 30 seconds to pitch your idea in front of like 500 people and I go up on stage and pitched it it was really good actually you met loads of people and actually at the back of it met Arthur yeah. which is great uh, but that was a scary thing and they do that every what, every two weeks there's like a pitch thing which is a brilliant experience but, yeah uh, yeah, and then met Arthur, and he's come on board, and we're motoring along now. Fantastic! So yeah, that's where we're at. Amazing! Uh, that's it. it absolutely yeah. phenomenal story. Yeah, and, and, so much. And, and 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 why do you think like you know what's missing out there in terms of our education? Why is this sort of this element of business and entrepreneurship? What's what's missing? 
<laughs> I, I, that's a that's a that's a weighted question, <laughs> a very weighted question. <laughs> there's there's a lot missing. It's a it's um it's a it's an old trade that we work in, and the education is uh, moving on, which is I think is a really positive thing. Yeah, um, it's moving through a lot at the moment. There's a few people who are really pushing for good things, and uh, people will come out better at the end of it as well. And there are a lot of the people work so hard in this industry. Mm. You know, we're not bankers. We don't know millions. We we're in it for the long haul. And yeah, we, we stick at it and we make stuff work. And yeah, passionate about it. And I, I firmly believe this needs to happen in our industry. And it should have happened years ago. Like it sh- it should just be the way forwards. And you know, I'm going to pass over to Dean. No, I think there's obviously the 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 growing need and the growing appetite for entrepreneurship across London. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. Co-working spaces, understanding how other businesses work and think, and you know, only in the past couple of years have we really got to experience it, embrace it as a city, especially in London and across the UK. And I think it's, I think it's finally bleeding into this, you know, archaic industry yeah you know i can say that um <laughs> it is one of the slowest industries to adopt tech we know that um but with tech becomes a different way we're thinking about things and thinking outside the box and i think that's now bleeding into yeah how every every especially yeah, yeah. the younger generation sorry the older generation but especially the younger generation how they approach everything else in their life yeah and i think now no, it, and, it, and it is. It's amazing when you see. I mean, I, I've speak to students um, who are kind of developing themselves on Instagram accounts, and they've got yeah, you know, yeah, followers yeah. of twenty thousand people, and they're starting to win little bits of work, and they haven't finished their degrees yet. And yeah. it's like that's you know, I think that because it, that yeah, that's yeah. that's that's interesting to because me because they understand how the the client world digests all this information yeah. and actually takes it all in. It isn't through pretty pictures of bricks it's through you know um you know there, there are some elements in instagram but even with instagrams when you look through a, an instagram feed there's a story to tell there yeah yeah um and it might not be what architects love but it's what clients understand and obviously there are vice versa there is a great need yeah. for the pretty thing yeah that actually goes back to the thing i was saying about having one project built or two projects built and you get like a surge in opportunities to market yourself. Yeah. When actually you can market yourself as an architect constantly. Mm. You're walking around the built environment all the time or the countryside or wherever you are and you can market that. You can market what you find interesting Yeah. because they're the things that people actually care about rather than like, oh, I can take a picture of a puddle looking up at something. Or, you know, there's, there's certain things that you can get your personality and your skill set out without actually just producing that one building yes that one oh, this, is, this is a really interesting conversation yeah. like, like how to practice architecture without actually practicing yeah. architecture yeah. and the different the, that and how that is actually a very mm. powerful way of engaging with a client because it's not they know you before they've got to you exactly and that's that the best thing yeah, yeah. And there's, there's a few people who are really going for that um but you know, you should start your Twitter account, Instagram account. Why not get yeah. involved? You know, there's a there's a, a Twitter. By the way, is the best thing for architecture. Absolutely love it. I don't tweet that much. <laughs> I'm more of a reader, keep up to date with everything. But you know, I um, uh, even if they start charging for that, I would. I think I'd pay. <laughs> don't tell them. But. <laughs> Brilliant. I just want to say a massive thank you for you guys uh, spending the time chatting hey, with thanks. me. Really, really thanks. inspiring thanks. talking mm-hmm. to you. And uh, I hope we get to do it again very soon. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Visit architectsforpublic.com. Yes, exactly. How, if, if people want to get yeah. in contact with you, how best do we... Uh, how best just go to the website. There's a contact page at the footer. Click on that. You'll be able to speak to me or Dean quite easily. Or send us a message over Twitter. And it's www. Yeah. Republics. Architects, architectsrepublic.com. Fantastic. Thank you very much, guys. Perfect. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. So that is a wrap. Thank you for listening. Today's podcast is sponsored by BQE Core, the award winning platform that combines time and expense tracking, billing, project management, accounting, and business intelligence. Make work easy with Core. You can get a free trial at businessofarchitecture.co.uk forward slash demo. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment 
except to help you be unstoppable.